The TrekWorks YouTube channel is sponsored by HDA Modelworks, suppliers of scale lighting products, detail accessory parts, and complete model kits. Visit HDAModelworks.com today. Hi again everybody, Boyd here with you. Well, we're back again for part two of our 1-1000 scale Enterprise from Discovery, the uh, Polar Lights kit. Uh, I got a couple hours to work on it here Sunday afternoon and I made some really good progress. I've got pretty much all the lighting and wiring done and everything on the uh, saucer. And I'm beginning to work over here on the secondary hull, so I wanted to get you guys caught up with what I'm doing. Uh, let's talk about the saucer first. I just used basic strip lighting here, just the regular uh, double density uh, LED tape in regular white and place those you know it took me a little bit of uh, trial and error placing them in different spots to get all the lighting uniform like I was hoping for and still not have to use a whole lot of it and it all worked out really good uh, you guys uh, remember I told you I was going to come back and cut these holes out for the uh, skylights on the top I did that and put my little lenses in there with some solar res and then I went and put in all the kit glass and everything and dusted over all that with a little bit of my white out of the airbrush to do my diffusion so I'm all set there. I won't get any little blinking light or twinkly lights flashing around. It'll, you know, keep all that from showing through. And plus it'll keep you from seeing any wires that you might be able to see on a totally clear window. Did that on, like, on all these little windows here. These windows here you got to pay attention to. Now some of them only will go in one spot, but a couple of them are um, exactly the same, but they have a mark left and right. So you got to pay attention to the instructions and the part number when you put these in. Um, so all that went pretty well. When I got to the part where I was going to do my navigation lights, I was completely fine here on the saucer. I used uh, 05, oh, 0805 SMDs, one green, one red, and one white at the very front uh, on the top and the bottom of the saucer. Hooked up to the tenant controls board here. Um, and I had plenty of room. But if you can see here on the top of the saucer, they have these right out at the very edge of that lip. So um, what's going to happen then is, you know, when you drop it down here, you're going to wind up with having a tiny little gap where it's not going to want to close all the way. So uh, I used 0805s. I would recommend that uh, you go to, uh, if you want to do this in the same way I did it, uh, you can go and get some smaller SMDs. I think they're s numbered six something. But you can go to uh, HDA Model Works' website and uh, uh, find the SMDs that I'm talking about. There's a size that's smaller than these. And they'll probably give you a lot more clearance. I put them on as flat as I could. I even barely, you know, grinded away a little bit of plastic to try to make more room. But what ha what wound up happening was that uh, it still creates a tiny little gap. So I had to uh, I had to uh, take my Dremel and make a, a really small little notch right on the edge of this saucer here um, where these are going to touch. Um, so that, uh, number one, it wouldn't be right up against it and would completely block the light from working. And the other thing would be, um, I didn't want a lot of pressure, you know, the, the wires are soldered onto the top of that SMD or on the back side of it. So I didn't want those to get, you know, a lot of pressure on them and maybe get pinched off or something. So, uh, otherwise when I went to put the saucer down, you'd see a little bow right there where the, uh, you know, it wasn't going to totally lay down flat. So I think I had something similar to that on, on a, Another ship I did, it might have been the uh, Excelsior or maybe the Enterprise D or some model that I built, but they had put these out there like right at the very end, and that's a real pain to try to uh, get anything in there. The way the kit part is, you have a, uh, they're not meant to blink, right? They're, under, they're, they're meant to be static on, so they have it like extended on to the piece of plastic, the little window insert that goes right here, and uh, it's just a little tab that goes in there and sits and a little cubby hole right there and a little tip of it sticks out and you just paint it with whatever color you're going to use you know you use uh if you're going to do it in red or you know uh, uh green which whichever you're going to you have to paint it because they just have regular light going to it that's the same as the rest of the lighting in here so it's static so if you're going to do it this way you're going to have to make a little modification but it's no problem once i get the um saucer put together i just want to make sure it's flat i can come back in here with a little bit of putty this the seam needs to be putted anyway and um That'll, that'll clean all that up. I just wanted to definitely make sure that my saucer is not going to be bowed because if you do that, there's no way to fix that. It left, you know, short of uh, 
sanding it down a lot on the top and you're going to lose all the panel grid and everything so didn't want to do that so that's one heads up i'm going to get, give you guys about this um got the control board mounted pick this spot right here because it's got clearance between the uh you know the top and the bottom of the saucer without touching uh and not getting into the way of any of these windows or anything and uh that worked out good so i wired all that in got uh the uh, strip lighting coming in on main power the engines here are uh, going to be lit the impulses are lit with two red um five millimeter leds with the uh the actual clear plastic parts here i tinted in orange i painted the frames around them and everything on the outside then again you can see i dusted over the inside of those with a really really fine coat of white which won't change the color at all uh because i've got the uh orange underneath of it you know it'll go the color you see is the last color layer of the color that you or you know not the top layer but the color underneath of that so i wanted to combine that red and orange again like i did on the bassards to give it a sort of a reddish orangish look and it'll kind of change a little bit they look a little hot right in the center when you um have it open like this but when you close it up the rest of the ambient lighting coming from in here uh from the light strips that's lighting everything else kind of helps flood this a little bit and it evens it all out so that worked out really good otherwise i was thought i was gonna maybe have to build some little uh light boxes in here or something but didn't have to do that uh, and you can see I, they had the brackets there for those to go already so they line up perfectly for you all the other brackets i cut them off because i didn't need them and that gave me nice flat spots here to put my led tape this is just basic led tape in regular white and again i talk about where i um you know, I had to strategically place this so I could get all the lighting to light up pretty pretty evenly. So I've just got main power coming in, two wires that ties together. All the plus stuff ties together right here on this little hub. And then over here, all the uh, grounds, for the most part, come together. And um, the control board, plus and minus, input power is wired directly to that. So as soon as you turn on the power, everything gets power. Uh, the lights, the board, you know, uh, we're going to continue that down the neck into the secondary hull and then that'll go up the pylons and into the engines so everything there will all get powered up at the same time the lights will start flashing you know all that stuff i'm not going to have any fancy switches for turning things off and on or anything like that you just turn on one power button and the whole thing lights up and starts working so uh nice and easy and simple um strip lighting done in here like i said i had to put one in the center facing up to get the lighting in the neck and um just glued half of it down i'll just leave the other side like that uh, it'll it'll be fine just like that did the same thing up here for the for the back part of the uh, lighting when I tried these little strips right here this little part in the back looked a little bit dim now the clear part that goes in here for the hangar bay doors uh, I painted a little Tamiya colors on that and I'm going to mask it off and paint it from the outside and um, it has a little bracket for a five millimeter so I'll be putting a little white one in there and that'll light up that little part in the back uh, and that'll take care of pretty much all the uh, internal lighting. I did some little red windows here in the same spot that they are on the Toss Enterprise. Another little call back to that. Um, just my own little thing, and it, it looks pretty cool. Uh, so that's about it, guys, as far as all this part. I wanted to show you this before I go ahead and close it up. You can see I've got it all wired here, and, and the way this is set up, I can just kind of flip it over. And when I do, i got to kind of reach in and tuck my wires, you know, and make sure they're not none of them come over and get in front of any of these... Uh, window ports or they don't get in front of any of these um you know my engine screens so um that'll be it i scraped off all the edges like i talked about with my hobby knife making sure i got a good clean edge all the way around here bare plastic on the top and the bottom and then once i glue it together it'll be good to go the wires will be coming out of the bottom of the saucer you can see i labeled them here one for the strobe light and one for the power that strobe wire comes all the way down the neck and meets in here like i said and will tie into these and then we bring the power in from the bottom up through our base and tie it all together right up here. I'll nip these a lot shorter. And then uh, when I get ready to seal it for the final deal before I put the deflector dish on, um, this will get clipped short, heat shrink tube put on it, and just lightly tucked back inside there and all closed up. And that'll be a wrap for that. That's how I pretty much do the big ships too. Um, so everything's great, guys. Um, one thing I am going to talk about, I guess, before I forget, um, we're going to come back in the second... Uh, another update video on this and show you um the work on the nacelles i haven't got the motors yet it's still the weekend here probably tuesday maybe wednesday i should get those and then i'll be able to finish off the nacelles and work on the pylon so that'll be the the next video um but i want to talk one more thing about the uh i mentioned trying to do this floodlighting here at the front 
uh, to get that registry lit up? Well, it's impossible to do, you guys. If you use this piece of plastic in there anyway, it's impossible because um, I even tried some really small, uh, smaller than this stuff, uh, uh, LED tape that I got from Jerry. And you can put it like, you know, I put it right up against it even, and it, and it won't it won't give that effect. Um, it, all it does is start to get really, really bright and look out of place with everything else. The reason being, even though I said I opened this up a little bit more, and you can see I didn't open it too far, or the lens still fits and everything in there. Um, the, uh, the angle of this, you can see it has a slight upward curve to it still, and there's not enough, this part here is not higher than that enough where you can get a light source in there and angle it down just slightly where it will um, cast a you know a light uh, lighting surface across this I was able to get it so it would maybe get about right in here but that it, it just didn't really do anything I mean you, this was still all gonna be in the dark it's kind of it kind of sucks because I was hoping to be able to do that um, the only way I could see maybe doing it is like I said without using this lens and the lens is cut at an angle like this like from the side view too so the light trying to hit it is being aimed upward going through that lens too, uh, which is not a good thing if you're trying to get it to shadow down here. The only thing I could think you could possibly do is get some real tiny SMDs um, and put them, you know, actually sticking out a little bit. Like, you wouldn't be able to use that lens. You'd have to have them sit sitting right here on this edge, slightly, you know, pointed down a little bit to give that, you know, floodlight effect across there. But, of course, it's not going to look right, and, um, you know, you're going to see it when the lights are off. Um that's the thing. Some of these, you know, these CGI ships and uh, even the Enterprise refit, the, some of that lighting on there is, it's not physically possible. You, you, you know, it's, it's coming from nowhere. It's coming from a source that's not even on the ship. If you think about it, if you look at some of that stuff, they would have to have a little ship flying next to it that was lights and just aiming lights at it all the time, like it's a little companion or whatever. So this was kind of the same thing. You know, this is a CGI uh, ship and they can do whatever they want with that. Unfortunately, the same thing's true down here on the bottom. Let me flip it over and I'll talk about that. These little lights right here look like, oh, that's great. Yeah, you got a little slit right there. And they'll uh, you, you put a light in there and it's going to automatically make a nice little V-shape light coming out. Well, not so fast because we have the same problem again. This part here is higher than it. It's too high. And this, this part's not high enough so that no matter where you put a light in there, it, it can't get it can't get out and get flat onto this because this is slightly sloped up as well and this you know you'd have to make this taller and this lower which would be a lot of modifying and then it probably wouldn't look right so um, the same thing happened when I tried putting light in you know real bright even uh, the uh, lighthouse LEDs all it did was wind up making this super bright way brighter than it needs to be and I couldn't get any kind of light to come out of there at all no matter even if I held it back and angled it down or whatever because this little ledge is in the way right here and um, it's higher than this part right here it would have to be totally flat actually it'd be, be best if it was a little bit lower and then pointing up to it and flooding onto it um, so no go there either guys unfortunately if I mean if this kit was molded in white you could do a Raytheon effect on that and look really good but this this gray here um, even if you put a really bright white SMD or LED right behind it it looks sort of green you, you're not gonna like the way it looks so that's a bummer on that, um, but um, uh, I was thinking about something similar on the nacelles, but I'll explain why that won't work either. There's no room in there with the motors, the spot where the light source has to come from to, to come down and, um, you know, reflect on the side of the secondary hull. Uh, there's no room there. The motors take up that spot. It's at the very front part of the nacelle. Um, you may be able to stick like a little SMD in there and get a little bit of light to come out, and but it's not going to be that nice sharp pinpoint light like you'd want. So, um, I'll be curious to see out there if somebody comes up with a solution, but like I said, I think they're going to run into the same problem I did. It's, um, you know, it's, uh, it's just the wrong angle. Uh, got the little torpedo tubes lit. I guess I should turn on the power and show you how everything looks. Let's get it kind of straightened out here a little bit. Um, so it's, yeah, it's ready to go together. You can see I've got the blinking lights here. Let me hit this light off. Um, they're nice and in scale. I don't have anything sticking up. These are flush, uh, which I really like. I don't think the I think the ships look kind of dumb with the big old bulb sticking up on the top, like a you know like a police siren. So these are flush. But if you look at them, you can see them totally clear from the sides and all angles too. They're nice and crisp and clean. That's because that SMD is uh, right up against that, and I that's just a little bit of that solar resin there, um, you know, uh, made 
flush where it's flush with the surface and uh, they look really great they're nice and in scale and they're not going to give a whole big reflection you know if, if they stick up above they start reflecting onto the surface and all that and you and you you notice on the TV shows and all that the ships don't look like that all you see is the pinpoint of light you don't see the color of the halo you know of the of the navigational light around it, so you shouldn't see that you won't see it if it's like this if you keep them flush um, but they work really good I hope you can see the torpedoes I, they're not supposed to look like they're firing. I just I wanted them beyond really dim, like they're you know maybe they're active but they're not in the process of firing something like that. Um, and here's the top, and you can see we got the little. It's not going to light up all these windows perfectly clear yet because I got some stuff in the way. The wires are probably in the way, and uh, it's not down all the way. But that's that's the lighting I've got going on there. When I tested it all out, these are all lit nice and even and everything. Probably got some wires in the way there. Yep, big old wire sitting right in front of it. So I'll make sure I adjust that before I close it all up. But all the perimeter windows light up really good here. Let me see if I can sit this on here a little bit better for you. I'm trying to do things with one hand. Um, gonna be hard to tell though. But you can see they're all gonna light up nice and clean. There's the bottom and some low light. Um, Got that nice little grill up in the front. You paint those little segments there. It makes it look really nice. Um, I don't want that too bright again, like way brighter than everything else because it doesn't look like that on the show. Okay, you guys. So um, I think that's going to cover it for this update here. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, about how I wired this at all, um, you can uh, just drop a comment there and uh, I'll be happy to answer it for you. But it's uh, I had gotten questions about, you know, how do you connect the... Uh, how are you connecting the control board to the lighting? Well, it's real simple. You just got the two power wires coming in like I talk about. You have a black and a red uh, input power on the board. You just connect those straight to your power. And then the um, outputs and everything, you know, you got to set them up for your blinkers and all that, the lights you got connected. But uh, the rest of your LED strip and everything, that just connects to the same power lines, you know. So I made a little hub. Like I said, I got a plus and a minus coming in and I brought everything off of that one thing. Those two wires now will feed down through the neck and connect to these. And so all that's tied together. More wires will come down from the pylons and go through here and connect. That's for the power up on top. I'll explain what I'm doing with the nacelles on a whole separate thing because I had to do a little bit of uh, working with a with a with some uh, you know a transistor to bring the power down for to spin the motor slower. It's a you know transistor that costs like less than a dollar you can buy online. And Jerry at HDA Model Works actually carries those too. L7805. It takes, uh, it'll handle up to 30 volts input and drops it down to 5 volts DC. Uh, so I'm bringing in 9 volts and I'm dropping it down to 5 to turn the engines a little bit slower. I didn't want them spinning really fast. So, um, but we'll talk about that in the next video. Okay, so that's it. Pretty simple. Everything went together good. Couple little mods. Um, nothing, nothing huge. Had to shave a little bit of the plastic on the, on the windows to clear my lights, you know. Nothing huge there either. But, uh, um, you know, like I said, the main thing is, is uh, this little thing that we got going on here on the top saucer. I was kind of, uh, well, okay, we're going to have to deal with that. But uh, a smaller SMD, like I said, might take care of that problem. You might not have that gap because they do give you a little, little bit of a recess there to where, you know, there's some space in there. If you can get a small SMD, which will probably light up just as bright, you're just lighting that little small pinpoint of light right there. You're not trying to light a big area or anything. That might be the, the ticket and the way to go. So... Just passing that along, everybody. All right, a couple days later, we'll be back with another update on this, working on the uh, nacelles, pylons. Should be starting to get uh, looking like the, sh the shape of a ship at that point. So we'll um, catch up with you then, guys. Take care, like always, and happy modeling, everyone.